welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an 18th century inspired makeup makeover on my face. You guys know if you follow me on Instagram and whatnot, I love doing painting inspired makeup looks like these here from the 18th century. They were wild back in those days. They loved using lead in their makeup even though they knew it was bad and getting lead poisoning. They had rotting teeth sometimes. They were trying to hide smallpox scars. There was a lot going on, but I would argue that we have a lot going on today that's not that dissimilar. Oh, and also I did one of these videos on the 17th century. It was just a little more chill and me doing makeup, but I'll link that below. So for centuries, the quote unquote fashionable skin color of the time was as pale as possible and um, they would use crazy stuff to achieve that look back in the day. They would mix like lead with vinegar and all sorts of other ingredients to get this super, super pale effect. And today I'm going to be using my RCMA palette. I'm going to mix the super white shade shade next to it. This RCMA palette, by the way, if they still sell it, um, I used to always keep in my makeup kit. I still do. Um, and it's really great because there's so many colors in one palette and it has a good amount of coverage as you're going to see. You can use it for concealer, for foundation, for anything. But anyway, back to the 18th century. <laughs> I'm gonna take these earrings out because they're kind of in the way. The thing I found interesting when I was researching this topic, because I've always been curious, is that they knew that lead was bad for them and still would put it in the makeup anyway. And it kind of reminded me of how nowadays we do lots of cosmetic procedures that are very dangerous, <laughs> despite knowing their danger. We would also carry it down their neck and onto their bosom, as they refer to it as. Uh, so I'm gonna do that too. One of the procedures I'm thinking of is a Brazilian butt lift, which is a procedure that Kim Kardashian and many other celebrities who have that like very tiny waist and very wide hips likely got. They basically take fat and put it in those areas and I don't see people often talk about the fact that it's a very dangerous cosmetic procedure. Um, obviously, there's some surgeons who say different things, but from the research that I've done, you just have a not insignificant risk of fat embolism where you die. People have died from this. People do die from plastic surgery. It's something that's not super talked about, I think, because, you know, most a lot of the time people are fine and when you're so desperate to fit into society's beauty standards, a lot of us will do whatever it takes. I think oftentimes in history, not that I'm any sort of historian or anything, but I feel like a lot of times, you know, nowadays is not as dissimilar as we would like to think from back then. Pretty happy with that RCMA uh, cream foundation. I think it did a pretty good job with our pale effect. Highly recommend these if you're starting a professional makeup kit or you just like to do lots of different, you know, Halloween looks. To set my face, I'm gonna use two things. I'm going to use a little bit of Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder underneath my eyes. I'm gonna use Charlotte Tilbury Setting Powder in the shade one for some of the rest of my face. I typically also use powders that had a very white cast to them using similar ingredients. I wonder if they cared about creasing back then. Like, do you think that they were concerned? Would they like blend out the creases and set them or were the creases good, you know? Another example of modern day products that can be pretty dangerous and are definitely controversial are skin bleaching creams. Those are still very commonly used today in many countries and, um, you know, is not that dissimilar from the idea of skin bleaching creams that they would use back then in the 18th century. Next is going to be our brilliant rouge on our cheeks and uh, they loved rouge back in the day and you know what, that certainly hasn't changed with me. I'm gonna mix these two ColourPop blushes. Something I thought was kind of funny when I was doing my research is one article says that often the wearer would end up looking rather ghastly uh, because this heavy, heavy makeup, if it rained or whatever, it was really, really easy to start like caking and coming off. Even with modern products nowadays, with all of our modern technology and research, um, I feel like often, you know, there's cakiness, there's lines, there's all this, these deep crevices. I cannot imagine the, what it must look like if you're like sweating and getting rained on in this like heavy, heavy, mercury and lead laden face paint. I'm really happy with how these blushes are looking. This is exactly the color I was going for. Uh, they really liked that almost like naturally rosacea 
ruddy cheek. I read a passage about the rouge and it's so jarring and bright that the writer back from the 18th century talked about how it has to be a mark of wealth because, you know, essentially it's just so crazy and out there and obvious you have to be trying to show it off. Maybe blush was like wearing Supreme or Gucci. For our somewhat thinner arched brows, I'm going to be using a mixture of these two Makeup by Mario pencils. One is a deep brown and one is a black. The ideal 18th century brow was thin, half moon shaped and kind of tapered towards the tail. For me, because I have such thick eyebrows, uh, it's not gonna look exactly how it did back then, but we're gonna give it a go. I still, to this day, find it absolutely fascinating how the ideal eyebrow shape changes from year to year, century to century, and culture to culture. It's just fascinating how beauty standards change. Public's attitude towards all this makeup was definitely mixed. Not everybody, especially working class people, thought that this looked good, you know? To many, it was very jarring and wild to look at. Some people definitely very much judged the practice of wearing this makeup. It was a little more forgiving if young people were experimenting and doing this crazy makeup, but older women were very much critiqued for wearing a full face, which is very, very similar today. I feel like a lot of times our society very harshly judges older women and I'm very against that. Specifically, the United States has a history, at least from my perspective growing up, of just not respecting and not thinking of older women as beautiful. And it sounds like back then they had some of that as well. All this was not traditional from what I understand back in that period. I'm going to put on a little mascara because I think it'll make the look look a little bit better on camera. So this is my little modern twist. I do think mascara was around during that time, but it wasn't as common and you would often use like cake mascara that comes in a little tin. It's very difficult to not do my makeup perfectly. I think nowadays we're very used to precision and these very precise movements and uh, it's hard to not follow through with that. I'm doing something that they didn't really do back then. I'm putting a little bit of white eyeshadow on my eyelid with my finger just to brighten things up a bit. I just feel like I needed a little bit more of a ghastly tone on my eyelid, you know what I mean? And for lips, I'm going to throw on a little bit of Bring It lip color from Laura Mercier. It's just like a little pencil. I love these things. I'm gonna just kind of messily stamp it on the lips. I also really adore some modern day interpretations. Like I love how Kira Knightley looks and some of the movies she's been in. As you can see, this style of makeup was definitely significantly toned down for those movies to sort of please the modern day eye. I have like sort of like a chin length bob going on right now, which is very not their time period. So I'm gonna take a little inspiration from our Kira Knightley modern interpretation and just do a few little curls around my face. Maybe just like a couple little ringlets, uh, which again is not super traditional of the time, but we're doing a little mix of modern today. Final look, I have to admit, I really like elements of this, especially the blush. Uh, I think nowadays we do a lot of similar things with blush. Blush is very popular and I certainly like to put a lot on. One of my favorite parts of doing this 18th century look is just comparing then to now and the fact that that was so long ago and yet we have a lot of similarities going on in terms of adhering to beauty standards, judgment, and even some makeup trends. But I also thought that this makeup could be like a little fun base if you want to be like an 18th century vampire or something, just put in some fangs on top of this look and it would be cute, I think. I really enjoyed making this look. Don't forget to like and subscribe or leave video suggestions below. It was really fun doing a little bit of research uh, doing this whole look. It's interesting. I hadn't done this look before and I had fun. Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!